In this video, we're going to look at conversions. We might use conversions, for example, for exchange rates. So if we're going on holiday, we might want to change our pounds into dollars when we go, and we might want to change our dollars back into pounds when we come home. We also might look at converting between weights or heights. So for example, if I've got a recipe and it's in ounces and I wanted to put it in grams, we could go ahead and convert between the two. So let's have a go at this question. It says the exchange rate is one pound is equal to $2.20. In part A, we're asked to find how many dollars we would get for 35 pounds. And in part B, how many pounds we would get for $80.30. The way to look at this, I think, is to say if we want to go from pounds to dollars, so we're going from pounds to dollars, we're going to multiply by the 2.20, or if you like, just the 2.2. If we want to go the other way and convert from dollars to pounds, we're going to do the opposite and we're going to divide by 2.20. Just think about this reasonably. If we convert pounds to dollars, it's going to get larger. If we convert dollars to pounds, it's going to get smaller. So let's convert now 35 pounds into dollars. So all I do is take my 35 and I've multiply it now by the 2.20 or 2.2. This is going to give me a larger value. Clearly, if we take the pounds and change them into dollars, we're going to get more. So in the calculator, 35 multiplied by 2.2 or 2.20, and that gives us $77. So if I went into the travel agent or the bank and I said, I've got now 35 pounds, how many dollars will you give me? The answer is 77. You might get uh, some commission on that, but again, that's kind of outside the scope of this particular tutorial. Okay, we now want to find how many pounds we would get for $80.30. So we're going back the other way. So what we can say this time is $80.30 divided by the exchange rate, which is 2.20, will give us the amount that we want in pounds. So this is going to get smaller. So if I do that one, I've got 80.3 or 80.30 divided now by the 2.2 or 2.20. So let's just put that in. And that's going to give us now 73 over 2, which is 36 pounds and 50 pence. So we're working between the two. So if I want to go from pounds to dollars, multiply by the 2.2. If I want to go back, divide by the 2.2. Let's look at another conversion. Let's look at centimetres to inches. One centimetre is approximately 0 0.4 inches. So roughly, give or take. So if I wanted to go from centimetres to inches, I would multiply by the 0 0.4. If I wanted to go from inches to centimetres back the other way, I would divide by the 0 0.4. So let's go ahead and do a couple of questions. Let's say I've got 17 centimetres and I want to find out how many inches that is. And then we'll go the other way and let's say I've got 64 inches. I want to know how many centimetres that's going to be. So let's start with this one. I'm going from centimetres to inches. So it'd be 17 multiplied by our 0 0.4 and that will give us the answer. So in a calculator, 17 multiplied now by 0 0.4 and that will give us on there 6.8 so 6.8 inches so we can see it's going to get smaller which is quite clearly the case okay so now we want to go from 64 inches back to centimeters so we'll be dividing so dividing by the 0 0.4 and this value is going to get larger so 64 and then we're going to divide this by 0 0.4 and that will give us now 160. So that's 160 centimetres. So all we're doing is converting back and forth. Okay, let's move on and look at another question. So this time we've got a graph. It says, use the conversion graph below to find. We've got A, how many dollars you would get for 30 pounds? How many pounds you would get for $50? How many dollars you would get for 200 pounds? So here's our conversion chart. We've got pounds down here and we've got dollars just here. So let's go ahead. Now this is going to be an estimate because my drawing is only as good as the author. My estimate is only as good as my drawing. 
So we want to find now 30 pounds and work out how many dollars we're going to have. So there's 30 pounds. All I'm going to do is read up to the conversion line. So if we locate 30 pounds and then we come up to the line and then read across, that gives us this value here. So that's 50, that's 25, 30, 35, 40, 45. It looks to be about $49, 48 or $49. You wouldn't be penalized massively. I'm going to put now that this is going to be $49. We now want to find how many pounds we would get for $50. So we can see this time what we're going to be doing is reading the other direction. In fact, we'll do a different question as they're quite, uh, they're quite close. We will do it for 75. Let's change this over. Let's go for $75. So how many pounds would we get? We locate $75. So let's go ahead and do that and we read across. So here's $75 and I'm going to drop the line down and that looks pretty good that it's going to be on this line here and that is going to be £46. So give or take £46. So let's write this in. So all we're doing now is converting. So £46. Okay, let's have a look at the next question. How many dollars would we get now for £200? We can see the graph doesn't go up to £200. What I'm going to do is look for a number that divides into £200 and then I'm going to scale up. If I look along here, 10 doesn't really fall on a nice number, 20 doesn't, but 40 here does. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to draw up. So from here, let's go ahead and do that. So if I go for £40, so up to here, and I read across... That looks to be, let's just get that right, that looks to be bang on just there. Now, that is $65. So if we think about this now, I've chosen a value that is now a factor of 200. So I've said that £40, so £40 is approximately equal to $65. So I want £200. So all I'm going to do is multiply this by 5. Therefore, I need to multiply this by 5. So that would give me now £200 is going to be 300 and just jotting this down, $325. So lots of different ways that we could do that question. That's one particular approach, or we could have used other values. Plenty of different values to use. I've just gone for these, as it's quite easy, because we saw that that point landed straight on there. We could have gone for 50 and then times by 4. Entirely up to you. Just find a nice convenient spot to get a value and then multiply up. Okay, let's move on and look at another question. We're told 100 grams is roughly 3.5 ounces. In part A, we're asked to convert the following recipe from grams to ounces. So G is grams and uh, we can say, we can just denote that as a G for grams. So let's have a look. 100 grams is 3.5 ounces. So what if I scale this one up by? Well, I've scaled this up by 2.5. So all I'm going to do here is 2.5 times by the 3.5. We know that 250 grams is 2.5 times 100 grams. This one is going to be 3 times. So this will be 3 times by the 3.5. And this one now is half of it. So this is going to be half multiplied now by the 3.5. So that's one way that we could do it. So let's go ahead and do that. So on a calculator, let's grab that up. We can work these out. So 2.5, so 2.5 times by 3.5, and that will give us how many ounces we need. So 8.75. So that's going to give me 8.75. This is one of the many ways that you can do this. So let's look at that. Another particular approach is to write a 1 to n ratio. That's also an option. If we do the next one, 3 times 3.5 is going to give me 10.5 ounces. And then we're going to get 1.7. What's that going to give me? 1.75 ounces. So there we go. So if you're unsure, in the calculator, 0.5 and multiply by the 3.5 and that will give us our 1.75. So all I've done is looked at scaling it up. I've looked at these as multipliers and simply gone ahead from there. 
Okay, we're asked to draw a conversion graph and find approximate values for the following. So 175 grams in ounces, 8.5 ounces in grams, 50 ounces in grams. So this is what I've got. I've got this, uh, got this chart here. So let's look at the conversion. 100 grams is roughly 3.5 ounces. So let's go ahead. I'll put grams down the bottom. So grams are going to be down the bottom. So let's just put here G. So that's going to be G. Uh, we'll put 50 there. We'll go for 100 here. We'll go for 150 here. We'll go for 200 here. Let's go for 250. Uh, we'll have 300. And then we'll have 350. If we go up this way, this is going to be the ounces. So let's put there ounces. So this gives me my ounces. Let's put two here. Uh, we'll go for two, four. We will go for uh, six just here. So six, eight, and ten. So let's go ahead and pick some points. So what we can say then is 100, and let's do this, let's put this on there, 100 grams is approximately three and a half ounces. So here's 100 grams, and then this is going to be three, so 3.5 is going to be about there. So just check him out, that's going to be three, that's going to be about 3.5. If I wanted to now do the two, the two is going to be on seven, so let's go ahead and put that there. So what I'm going to do is draw my conversion graph through these points. So from zero, from just here, zero, zero, we'll come up and we'll draw the line through those. So this now is my conversion graph and I'm looking for approximate values. So 175 grams in ounces. So all I'm going to do is locate that. So 175 grams is just here and we would read up and we can see that that's about 6.2 ounces. So approximately, this is only an approximation. It's only as good as my level of accuracy here. So we can say that's approximately 6.2 ounces. So let's put that just there. So 6.2, so 6.2 ounces. If we now look at 8.5 ounces in grams, well eight, and then we've got nine just here. So 8.5 is gonna be about there. You will, of course, have a, a more accurate go at this in an exam if you have this. I think 8.5 is going to be about there, give or take. Then we're going to drop this down and we will drop the straight line down, the perpendicular. And that looks to be now, so we've got here 225. Uh, that looks to be about 240 grams. So let's put that there. We can, of course, work this out for using a calculator. But if we're asked to use a graph instead, so 240 grams. And now we're asked to find 50 ounces in grams. So what I'm going to do is find 10 ounces and then multiply my answer by 5. So if we do that, let's go ahead and do that one. So this is 10 ounces, so we will find that and we'll drop that down. That looks to be about there. So what can we say that is? That is going to be about 285. So we can say then the following. Let's just write this in. So we'll write it in. We can save it to 10 ounces. So 10 ounces is equal to approximately, and we can use the approximately equal sign, 285 grams. So all I need to do now is multiply this answer by five. So we can say now five times by the 285 will give us that answer. So if you want to do that in a calculator, feel free, five times by the 285, and that will give us 1425. So we can say that that's going to be approximately 1400 and 25 grams. So I split that question up once we've looked at an actual conversion, then we've looked at a conversion graph and kind of mixed the two together. So conversions and conversion graphs, just make sure you're generally fairly accurate with these and you understand that if you're moving between them to go from one to the other, we multiply up, then to go backwards, we divide by the same scale factor.